Hi everyone, it's Dominique with This Girl's Worth and today I'm going to be talking about the wilderness experience. The reason I'm talking about this topic is because I've been in a a weird state of mind, I would say, in the past like five months. Like for some reason, I have been feeling just this, I just haven't been feeling content with myself and life and there's something there's a lot of things that I want to work on but I feel like I am becoming more and more stressed out because I am obsessing over these things that I want to do or these things I want to work on and I know that I'm in a, a good place in my life right like I technically have everything that a person could want I'm grateful to God for securing all of my needs but I've been praying to God I've been saying God I know that you've shown me more so I'm not content with right now and I don't understand because I feel like there's something you want to tell me or something you want to show me or something that I'm missing in my life and for some reason I really can't figure it out. And it's like the things that you keep telling me to do are the things that keep slipping my mind and it's like I'm distracted day in and day out. And I was like, I don't understand, Lord. It, it kind of felt like I had more understanding or security or more of a, 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 had a clearer picture of what I was supposed to be doing and where I was a year ago or even before that in some ways, not all. And I said, I'm happier than I am than I was before. I'm prospering more than I was before. But for some reason, I don't feel like I am in that place of catching up to where I am and I feel stuck mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And I feel like at sometimes that if I'm not careful, I can regress and go back to a place that I have, I prayed so hard not to go back to. And I've been praying about that for months and I've been talking to God and I've been praying. And I'm like, God, I just don't, I don't know what it is. I'm not feeling something the way I'm supposed to be feeling it. And I really, I couldn't put my finger on it because I literally would go down the list and say, okay, God, like I'm thriving in all of these areas. So what is it? Like, what am I missing? I know there's things you told me to do. And every time I would be like, is it this? The Holy Spirit would be like, it's not that. Is it this? The Holy Spirit it says not that. I'm like, okay, God, I know there's something you want me to learn, but is it this? And the Holy Spirit wouldn't say anything. So I knew the answer was no. And so I just kept going through those periods over and over again. And I had one of those tonight. And then God showed me something. God showed me that I was in a wilderness experience. And then for the first time, it was making sense. For anyone who's not a Christian who's listening to this podcast, the wilderness experience is a reference to Exodus with the Israelites, with Moses. When God brought them out of captivity in Egypt, they were supposed to go on a three-day journey to the land of milk and honey or the new land that God wanted to take them to. But because of their own issues, <laughs> the thing, their own disobedience, what was supposed to be a three-day journey ended up being a 40-year journey. Now, yeah, you heard it, 40 years. And literally, God had to take an entire generation and remove that generation and give the new generation the promised land that was originally intended for the previous generation. And the reason it's called the wilderness experience is because the wilderness experience is meant to shape us. It's meant to change us. It's meant to be a time where we have connection with God. But a lot of times people will feel lost. People will feel confused. People will feel frustrated, much like the Israelites did during that phase because God took them out of captivity, but they struggled in their relationship with God in the wilderness experience. The Israelites are not the only ones in the Bible who experienced the wilderness experience. Jesus also had a wilderness experience. When Jesus was driven out to the wilderness and tempted by the devil in order to get him to betray God. And of course, Jesus resisted the devil in his temptations, even though his temptations were bogus because he tried to sell him the world. When how are you going to sell someone something that they already own? You know, the devil's on borrowed time. So it was kind of one of those experiences where there's several right in the Bible where God would bring someone out into the wilderness to send them through trials or tribulations to test them. 
And it's a period of isolation before he brings them into what he's called for them. But people can choose to be disobedient and to not learn what God wanted, wanted them to learn in the wilderness experience. So tonight, when I was praying to God and I was just talking to God and I was just like, these are the things, God, that, you know, you told me these things were going to happen, but I'm confused because I feel like I'm in a stalled place right now in these areas in my life. And I'm not so sure why, because I, there's no reason for me to be stressed out, really. There's no reason for me to everything I asked you for, you have given to me with, you know, except for a couple of things. That, you know, God has told me, God has confirmed to me recently that those things are very near and on the way to me sooner than I think. But there's some things he wants me to get first. But he hasn't even told me what those things he wants me to get are. So I'm on a day to day basis like, God, what is it that you want to show me? Like, just make like, you know, make it clear so that I can just get it and got it good and get what you got for me. Right. That's what we think as Christians. But a lot of the tests that God has been giving me. God was like, I'm going to keep giving you the same test over and over again until you get it. But I'm not going to tell you what the test is. And as the time is going on and I'm seeing the things that I'm struggling with, the things that I'm thinking about, the things that pop up, it's starting to make more sense to me. I'm starting to be like, I see what the test is. I'm seeing where, where God is wanting to strengthen me. One of those areas that God has been working on strengthening in me was just my thought process about myself and how, you know, even though I have made tremendous leaps and bounds in the way that I think about myself and process myself it's my sense of validation because God doesn't want me to to bring me into a new situation with old thought patterns with old behavior patterns so he's wanting he's stripping things off of me right I've heard it called the pruning process when I was in therapy it was called the pruning process which I feel like I've been going through for years but I am in a much better place now like 10 times better but still I'm in the wilderness and and I'm like god am I here because I'm not getting something and so that's what I want to talk to you guys about today you know the wilderness experience and things that you might feel that kind of can signify to you that you could be in a wilderness experience and how we can prolong our own wilderness experience by not being obedient to what god wants to give us or teach us in that moment I don't know if it's being prolonged. And I realize that a lot of the things that God has told me to be obedient in are the reason and me not being obedient in those areas is why I'm failing in certain tests that are coming my way and how my obedience, I think, will will begin to transform some things in me. So I won't go into too much depth about what specific things God is working on me on because I don't feel like it's my place to talk about them just yet. I feel like it's my place to talk about it when I'm on the other side of it, not in the moment of it. But how did I know I was in a wilderness experience? Well, in the past, I used to have certain struggles with mental health. I don't have those struggles any longer, but there's been this fear that I would start to go back to that place that I would regress. And anyone who's had struggles with mental health, your fear is that you're going to go back to that bad place because a lot of times it feels like you're like, okay, thank God I made it out of that place. That place was really difficult for me to even be in in the first place. So to be out of it, you're kind of like sleeping with one eye open. Like, am I going to go back there? Or like, what's going to happen? You know, is it too good to be true? And that exposed for me an area of a lack of faith. Because years ago when I was in my season, when I was in another wilderness season, God had exposed to me and had shared with me that he was going to deliver me from that thinking and that process if I was obedient to him. I made a big move in my life in choosing to be obedient to him and God did deliver me from that. And yet I still have that fear that it's going to come back. And by that, I was opening the door to allow certain things to come in my life that would uh, would uh, bring me to a place of going back there because I hadn't believed God in the deliverance. So that was a huge revelation for me. But if you're someone who might be in a wilderness experience, you might have come out of a situation or you might be leaving a situation that God has delivered you from or you've prayed for deliverance from and there's still somewhat of a shock factor or an attachment to that old dead place. When I think about the Israelites 
and being taken out of Egypt, right? Like they should have been very thankful that they were out of captivity. But when they were in the wilderness, they complained to Moses and they complained to God that their situation was actually more consistent and desirable in captivity. And you're probably thinking, <laughs> if you're freed from bondage, why would you want to go back there? And it's because it's a place of safety. A lot of people found safety in their past. They found safety in their dry places. And I had to start questioning myself and to say, this is a new territory that I'm entering and around me is a lot of isolation that I'm not used to and familiar with. And God was taking me and is taking me through this wilderness experience. And there is that temptation to feel comfortable with what's familiar or to go back to old habits, old things, old situations to be comfortable, right? Because sometimes you might gain a little bit of your strength back and you're like, I could handle that. In the past, I couldn't, but I can handle it now. And I had to remember that God, those are dry bones. And God removed me from those dry places. And he wants to bring me to a land of milk and honey. But I have to go through the wilderness experience to get there. And the wilderness experience, I have to shed the things of the old. So if you're feeling that attachment to old things, even though God has removed or delivered you from old things, it could be emotionally, it could be financially, it could be mentally, it could be physically, then you're most likely in a wilderness experience. And God wants to shed those things and teach you things in this wilderness experience, which is going to be painful. It might even be lonely at times. You might even have seasons of heaviness, but it's intentional because God is shaping you. Another thing that might show that you're in a wilderness experience is the one thing that you pray the most about God is not giving it to you, even though it seems really close. So sometimes God will tell you, oh, this is going to happen for you. This is meant for you. It could be a job. It could be a new house. It could be a new car. It could be a relationship. I don't want to be materialistic. It could be a relationship. It could be a new friend circle. It could be, I'm trying to think like what options. I mean, it could be a lot of things, right? And God could say, all these things are for you. All these things are meant for you. And he says, they're coming soon. They're on the way. Like God gave me confirmation in my spirit of a couple things. He, I remember I was just sitting there and nothing was happening. And I prayed and I was like, God, is the spirit you? I was like, God, uh, I was testing the spirit. I said, God, is the spirit you? And God confirmed with the overwhelming amount of peace in that moment. He said, it's coming. And I was like, yes. Okay, cool. Amen. Right? But then I was like, okay. But then a month goes by and your situation looked exactly the same as it did last time. So you're just kind of like, okay, I mean, you said it's coming. So I'm going to trust you, Lord. But it's not there yet. And that can be frustrating in the moment. And I, and now that I recognize tonight that I'm in a wilderness experience, then it absolutely made sense to me. A third thing is that it might seem like there's a lot of chaos or disorder or disorganization. Is that a word? Unorgan things are unorganized around you, but yet things won't touch you and you're being protected. Even though I have been really wishy-washy in my walk, like I've not been reading my word like I'm supposed to. Like I read my Bible like two, three times a week and I should be reading it more than that. God has reminded me night after night, he said, the things that are happening around you will not touch you. You will be protected. You will be elevated what to the world seems like out of season. And you will be like, God has constantly reassured me that he's going to bless and protect me. Nothing's going to come against the word of God. No matter what someone tries to cast down, what's God's will is God's will. God has constantly reminded me. But he was like, you have to stay focused and obedient. It's always like that, that reminder, like as long as you continue to focus on me, then things will go the way that I have told you they're going to go. So my mind is on God every day. My thoughts are on God. I want to please God. But because there's a few things that God has told me that are in disobedience, God is not going to allow me to have those things until I get those things right. And it 
it makes sense because a couple days ago, God actually showed me the reason why I had to be obedient in those areas because he's trying to remove some things out of me that I have been holding on to. But because of my disobedience, I have been prolonging my own process of those things being removed outside of me. So one of the main things that God's been putting in me, like study your word, study your word, study your word, study your word. And I have been studying things of God and understand and spiritual warfare and things like that. I've been studying that. But God was like, I need you to study your word and I need you to study your rep and study it because I want to bring things to you in your word. I need you to be in a meditation state when it comes to my word, thinking of the things of my word. And, and, and I will notice a difference in my day. Like, it's funny the times I don't read my Bible and I'm kind of just flowing. I'll listen to certain music. Then the next day I'm struggling with certain thoughts and things like that. And I'm just like jamming and listening to my secular music. Right. And then the day I'll read the Bible and I'm just meditating on God's work day and I'm praising and I'm talking to God all throughout the day. Like God literally will take the taste out of my mouth for secular music. Like I'll listen to it. And I'm like, this don't, I, it doesn't even, I don't feel anything. It doesn't even make me feel good. Like I don't feel good. The spirit behind it is not good like I don't even want to listen to this music I, oh, I don't even watch that show it doesn't bring me peace because there's something wrong in there I'll see certain symbolism like oh, okay so this is an anti-god thing and then I'll, I'll I'll remove it or turn it off but stuff that I'm not aware of when I'm not studying my word the way I'm supposed to so that's one thing that God has told me to do and he has revealed to me what he wants to remove out of me some of those things but I know there's always more to it because there always is with our Lord and that's making me really think and process like I'm prolonging my own wilderness experience. So that's another thing. You know, God could be showing you th certain things he wants to do with you. And it may look like it's within reach. But God is telling you also to do something else on the flip side that you're not being obedient with. And God can't give you that because if he gives it to you prematurely, it won't be a blessing. A blessing the way it's supposed to be. It'll be a lesson. It'll be some another thing that you will fail and put yourself into and you will worship that thing as an idol instead of recognizing God who gave it to you and honoring God with the way you treat that thing. So that's another thing that may show you're in your wilderness experience. Other The one other thing I want to mention is the distractions. I feel like for the life of me, I cannot focus. Like I cannot focus. I have to try really hard to focus. And that's not me. Normally, I am a very productive person throughout my day. If I want to do something, I'm going to do it. Okay? I can wake up in the morning, work out, cook, three meals a day. I can watch my favorite shows, get all of my work done, coach my team the way I need to, take my after work client calls, clean up my house, do some shopping, clean out my refrigerator, wash my clothes. Lay down in the bed, watch one show, go to bed on time and be productive. For some reason, my days are just passing by and I'm like, where did the day go? And I didn't do anything I said I was going to do that day. I was like, I'm going to clean up this day. Didn't do it. I'm going to wash my clothes this day. Didn't do it. I'm doing everything a day late. I'm snoozing my alarm. And that's because the enemy is working overtime to distract me to throw me off because if I were to be on task and diligent the way God wants me to be in this season then that means I would grow and I would get closer to what God's will is for me another sign you may be in the wilderness season is constant distraction and when you look at your days you're like where did the day even go did I even do anything necessary in the day did I even do anything necessary and nothing would have been necessary you're not even acting like yourself. I'm more tired than I have ever been. And I get more sleep than I ever have been. And it's not because I'm depressed because I'm not. It's because I'm distracted. So many distractions are coming my way. So many whims of my flesh, right? So another aspect of that is that discipline aspect, right? God has been trying to discipline me. And he's teaching me discipline all over again in a different way. And he's calling me to more discipline because he wants to bring me to another place. But the less discipline that I demonstrate, the more I sabotage myself. And so as I'm thinking about this wilderness experience where God takes me, one, thank you, Father, for the revelation. Thank you for the insight. And thank you, Holy Spirit, 
for speaking to me when I came to God in earnest tonight and I said, God, I don't know what's happening. I don't know, to be honest. Like, I just don't feel motivated to do these things. I don't want to do these things. This is how I feel. I'm thankful for everything you give me. For some reason, I just feel like there's a little bit more than just, you know, all the all these good things, these financial material things. Like, I want more. I want to do what you've called me to do, God. I want to live in what you've called me to do. And God says, I, I have these things for you. They're right there in front of you, but you're missing them. And that gets me motivated. And that gets me excited. And then also gets me frustrated at myself. It's slap <laughs> on my wrist. Like, what are you doing? You are your own detriment, your own downfall. By not being disciplined, by not showing you, not showing and choosing what God has told you to do. I know I'm not the only one in this wilderness experience. And from the beginning of this pandemic, I mean, while I have a lot of feelings about this whole scenario going on that I will not express, I feel like in general, all things work out for the goodness. All things work out the way God wants them to. All things work out to the glory of God. And so... uh when I think about this entire situation and what's happening, I know that God is is giving a lot of people time. God has taken some time away from some people, but God is also giving a lot of people time. And God is raising up a lot of his people in this time. And God wants to bless his people and give them favor beyond measure and understanding. But he's calling a lot of people to obedience. And this is a wilderness season for a lot of people. I know I'm not the only one because the Bible tells me that anything that I'm experiencing, my brotherhood around the world is experiencing. So I know that there are other hundreds of thousands, millions of people of God who are also in a season of wilderness who God wants to bless whom God wants to do amazing things for, but they're stuck in their own ways. They're stuck and distracted of the things of the world and the, and the, the daily things of the world. And God says, don't let the things that I've given you to provide, the things that I have given you to make a way, the things I've given you temporarily to sustain you, be the thing you worship. When we put more focus into the things that God gave to bless us, to sustain us in the temporary and then we do in the long time term goal, then we've created a, a false idol. Your job is not the end all be all. God gave you that job and God can take it away anytime he wants to. No matter how amazing of an employee you are, whatever's in your bank account, God blessed you with that. That home you're in, God blessed you with that. That car that you drive, God bless you with that. And if you have none of it, but you have your health and you eat every single day and you have a roof over your head, God bless you with that. And if you have not even that, but you have your health, God still blessed you with that. Everything that God has given us, he has blessed us with. And yet we turn around and we say, God, the thing, okay, I'm good. I'm good there. And that speaks to not only the goodness of God that he gives us that and we're happy, but God says, I have more for you. But sometimes we can't see more for ourselves and we sabotage that imagine you have to get from point a to point b and well let's say you get from a to c right there's a point b in the middle and let's call b wilderness and say you get to point b and you just stepped outside of where god wanted to deliver you from which is point a and then you settle there because you say okay god you got me out of there. I'm good to go. God removing you from this situation, God changing your life is only the first part. He just needs to get you out. When he gets you out, I look at it this way. And this is the visual that God just gave me in the moment. God says, point A is mud. You are in mud. You are filled and covered with mud. I can't let you walk into two, to point C, your brand new place, your brand, brand new clean place with mud covered all over you. The wilderness is dirty and I need to wash the mud off of you. So you have to walk through the wilderness to get clean. And that cleaning process looks a lot like getting dirty. But by the time you walk into point C, you will have been transformed and renewed and ready to receive the blessing that I have for you. But if you go from being in the mud and then you get out of the mud and you think that that's the, the end journey, then you've missed the whole point. Hopefully that makes sense to someone. Because I think of it like it's a, if you think about it, right? 
I'm soaked in mud, so I'm 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 wet and dirty with mud. And say I walk into a, 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 a you know point B, which is full of water, and it's just a bunch of water flooding me over. So now I'm soaking wet. But I didn't recognize that I'm going through a purification process. God is purifying some people. God is purifying. He said, you know, I'm purifying your heart because there's some things that got in there that tainted the way that you, you're supposed to operate, who I made you to be. So I'm purifying that. I'm purifying some people's minds. Some of you are caught in sin because your mind is stuck and you haven't you don't have the knowledge and awareness on purifying and exposing and revealing things to you some people god is saying i need i'm I'm calling you to be more disciplined because i need to know that you're going to work diligently for me in this next level so your cross to bear is going to be the lack of discipline it's going to be distractions that happen so god is going to to going to correct those things in you. Maybe you're less disciplined than you were before you technically entered or technically came into the awareness you're in a wilderness phase. But that's the trick of the enemy. He works and over time you just keep chipping away and you become less and less what God has called you to be and how he called you to operate. And then before you know it, you're happy with just being in the moment. Okay, God, I know you said this job was to provide. And I know you said you want to give me my own this, this, and this. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm making good money here. So I don't, you know, I'm, I'm okay here. Instead of being like, God, I know you have more for me. And I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about purpose. The wilderness experience, when I... God revealed it to me and he showed me that image tonight in my prayer time when I was literally, I wasn't even praying. I didn't have any clue. I said, God, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I was like, God, I know normally I, I'm praising and running around my house and, you know, in spiritual warfare. And I know I'm, I'm, that's usually my, I said, but right now in this season, I just feel like, I'm like, I don't know. That's like the real expression. I'm like, I don't know. That's what I've been telling God. Like, God, I, I love you. You know I love you. You know I want to do right. But I, I, I don't know because I feel like I, I should be doing something else. I just don't know. And God's like, all these little things I told you to do, you keep forgetting to do. And it may seem small and nobody else may know about it, but I need you to do it. And then when you start to feel out of, uh, out of sorts, you start to feel unlike yourself, it's because you are adapting to and accepting the wilderness experience. Instead of understanding that this is just a part of the journey of a place that I'm taking you, that I have shown you and told what well, I've told you, I've been shown you what I want for you and what I plan to give you, but I can't let you take that over here because that will ruin over here. And then you'll be back up in this place a couple years down the road. In another wilderness experience, God's like, I want you to do it right. So it was honestly a sigh of relief for me. It was relieving to hear that I was in a wilderness experience because it gave understanding and context to what has been going on with me for the past couple months mentally, emotionally. Because I literally was, I was like, okay, Lord, I don't know. <laughs> I, I feel you. I feel your presence. I feel the Holy Spirit speaking to me about different things, but it just seems to not give me the answers I'm looking for. And I started to, the, tonight with God revealing to me that I'm in my wilderness experience. I stopped asking God for answers. And I started asking God to help me change my heart posture and to help my unbelief. Because when we don't understand the wilderness experience, we, we're, we're lacking faith. Something about what God has shown us or what he has told us, we, we don't believe. And God understands that because he says, well, I haven't shown you. And that's the thing. I'm like, okay, God, I can't see the other side. So it's, sometimes it's hard for me to, I, I, I trust that you have my best interest at heart. I trust that you will do what you say you will do, Lord. I trust that you know me, Lord. But then there's also that part of me that says, God, you're bringing me to something I've never, ever experienced before. You're bringing me to something that I've never had before. You're bringing me to something that I don't know how to navigate. And that's why God said, I need to purify you. I need to purify you and I need to work in you. And there's things I need to change in you because I don't want you to bring the old version of Dominique that 
would start off right and just take it too far because her heart would rule her. Her emotions would rule her. Her logic would go out of the window. She didn't know how to set boundaries. All these different things. Just in life in general. She didn't have the correct discernment because her heart would get in the way of her truly assessing people's character by their discernment, by the discernment that I've given her. God said, I need you to shed not only just those things, more things. I need you to shed all of that because that's not going to work over here. And when I, as I talk about it, and it's, God's really even more to me as I talk about it. I feel rejoice. I, I feel, I, I'm feeling just the feeling. I, I feel, you know, I want to rejoice. Because I'm like, it makes sense now. Because a lot of times when we lack faith, it's because we don't have knowledge and understanding. And a lot of times the Holy Spirit will reveal things to us if we just are true, truthful to God about the fact that we don't know. I had to let go of that pride and that control of saying, I'm a child of God. I'm on the right path. I'm doing what God, I want to be able to, I had to, let, I had to talk to God honestly tonight. And say, God, I, you know, I love you. I know what you told me. I trust you. I believe you 100%. I also am feeling just kind of really confused right now with what you're doing with my life. And it's so funny how we pray to God, expecting God to give us an answer or wanting God to give us an answer. Like, God, please give us an answer. God, please give us something, some light. And instead, he, sh he sheds truth. And when he sheds truth, then our heart changes. Our mind changes instead of God revealing more to us because the answer is never in us knowing more about the destiny. It's in us about trusting and extending more faith. And God showed me that you have a lack of faith because you I'm taking you somewhere that you've never seen before and I've never shown you before. And I'm telling you to just trust me. And I told you that something's on the way and I'm not telling you what. And I know I've shown God said he showed me. He's like, I've shown you some things about it, but there's things I won't tell you. But he said, some things on the way, you're very close, but I need you to get it right. And so now that I know, I want to be more serious and more accountable to myself in making sure that I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. And not because it's religious, but because it's about discipline and because I love the Lord enough to be disciplined, not to be perfect because I know I'm not perfect, but to be disciplined. So that's all I have to say about the wilderness experience. Hopefully some aspect of me talking about this is, is helping you or make you, maybe something is clicking. You're like, oh my goodness, yes, that's me. That's what I've been going through. That's what I'm experiencing. That, that makes sense. Because I, I mean, I just, <laughs> when God told me that, it made complete and total sense. Sometimes we think. Going through the tribulation is the wilderness experience. We don't think going out, being out of the situation and when things and everything is good, being in the wilderness experience, when everything seems good on the outside and you have all the things, all the things in the places and all the people that you think are supposed to be there and all the situations and you're happy, but you're like, God, there's an aspect missing. Because the Bible is not about happiness. I don't recall a single Bible verse that ever says you're supposed to be happy, but What's missing is your heart posture. And God is showing me, I need your heart posture to change. I need you to have faith in me. I need you to have faith in the deliverance I said was yours. Because as long as you don't have faith in the deliverance that I said was yours, you will continue to slowly creep back into those areas that have delivered you from. You have to believe that you're free. You have to believe that I have brought you out of that. You have to believe that I am protecting you and I won't let these things come against you. You have to believe that me keeping things away from you is for your protection. You have to believe that even though you've healed and you're better, that that doesn't mean you go back to dead and dry places. God has continuously reminded me and said, you're a different person. You're a new person. I've purified aspects of your life and I see the changes. I feel the changes in me. But there was still some unbelief. And it showed in my day-to-day -day actions by me not being disciplined. Sometimes as Christians, we sabotage ourselves because we're like, okay, God, I hear you, but I don't see it. And we sabotage it because we we honestly don't know what the other side looks like. But I thank God 
that he brought the knowledge to me so that I could change my heart posture and change my mind about how I went about this instead of continuously praying to God that I feel confused. And I thank God that the Holy Spirit revealed those to me and that God loved me enough that even as I prayed to him earnestly, I was like, oh, heavenly father, please. I was just like, I was like, Lord, I, you know, these are the things you told me to do. Um, it's hard. And I'm confused. And I know I get distracted throughout my day. And I know what you tell me to do. And it's on my mind. And then I just go to and not all sorts of things happen. I go to sleep. And then as I'm sleeping, you're speaking to me, telling me the things that you told me to do throughout the day. And I just go right to sleep <laughs> and be like, I know you told me to read my word today, but I'm just going to sleep. So, yeah. My hope is that I can share that somebody else will be blessed as well. Because we're all in our walks. None of us are perfect. I'm not perfect. Like I told you, being disciplined, reading my word, trusting God, having faith. Even as a Christian, as someone who I love the Lord, and I'll declare Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior to anyone in front of anyone. There's people at my job who follow me, and I still talk about Jesus. Because I'm not going to stop talking about Jesus or religion because somebody else Somebody else doesn't want to hear about it. But even in that, I still struggle in my walk at times. I still don't do what God has called me to do. I still lack discipline. I still make mistakes. Sometimes my way feels easier than God's way. But I know that my way always leads to destruction. And I have to pray to God. And I thank God that I can be honest with God and God will receive me in my honesty and say, I still love you anyway. Let's get back on track. I'm excited, y'all. Because these things, I mean, it could be there. I mean, God could bless financially, but I know, you know, I mean, I, I'm blessed now as I am. Uh, God has always blessed me in the area of finances, He's always taking care of my needs. And I thank the Lord for that. He continues to watch over me. And I thank the Lord that he continues to remind me that, that he won't allow anything to come against me, that he has protected me and my household. I thank Heavenly Father for that. But in addition to that and being protected in my household and God revealing those things to me, i Thank God that he doesn't give up on me even when I'm not being obedient. He's like, oh, well, I was trying to do the same thing for five months. So if she can't listen, then that's her problem. How I can be sometimes dismissive of people because, you know, I'm not God and my patience can be short. I thank God that he that his love, his mercy and his grace always showed up, even though he's 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 a God of justice, even though he's a God, he is the judge. And even though he will reprimand us. He'll send his Holy Spirit to reprimand us and to get us on track. He always does it with love. I never, I never feel unloved when God reprimands me. If anything, I feel loved more. So thank you for listening to this conversation. Hopefully it blessed you in some way. I'll talk to you in the next one. God bless you. Have a great night.